Hi, I'm Jay Pulaki, and this is the HR Bytes podcast, where HR practitioners share their think globally and act locally digital HR agenda. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the HR Bytes podcast and podcast. We are present on all your favorite podcast channels and YouTube. Do check us out on social and follow our journey as we talk to HR leaders who are transforming our function by leveraging technology today. Leaders who are truly digital first and are also human first. Today's guest is uh, Ifi Etowoku. Hi, Ifi. Welcome to today's show. Hi, Jay. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. Well, Ify, you've been in HR for some time now, and you've been an HR team of one for some time now. Can you talk about your experience, um, what brought you into HR, and how um, your journey has brought you to this stage in your HR career? Of course. Thank you so much. Well, hello, everyone. I'm so thrilled to be here today on HR Bytes. Uh, as a manager, a HR manager with 10 plus years experience, I've had the beautiful privilege of just diving deeply into the world of human resources. So I've tackled everything from talent acquisition all the way to organizational development. And I'm really incredibly passionate about, you know, fostering those inclusive workplaces and empowering employees to thrive. My journey into HR actually started from education. I was in education for seven years. I was a special ed teacher. And then I championed little hearts for such a long time. I felt that the next best position for me was to just go champion all hearts. And so I delved into getting a certification in HR and I went full throttle loving it. I just live and breathe HR. Wonderful. You know, we often uh, forget that the H in HR, the human, is also the heart. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, true. Right? Um, and it's so important for us to keep that human touch in mind as we talk about automating our HR function. So, if we, um, in your experience as an HR team of one, how do you think we should be approaching all this new automation and AI for the HR function that's coming at us at lightning speed? And we are told that as HR leaders, if we do not um, you know, prepare our organization for this increased use of automation and AI, we might actually fall behind or, or actually be left behind by the business leaders um, and that's not a good look for any of our HR colleagues. So how do you think we should be approaching all of this? So I do think it's essential to first identify the pain points and areas, especially when it comes to your company or organization, because these AI and automation really do add value as technology to any function in business. So conducting a thorough assessment of the organization, as well as the HR processes, uh, just to pinpoint those tasks that are repetitive, those tasks that are time consuming, any kind of activities um, that could be prone to human error or bias, um, making sure that we're making that thorough assessment first, and then collaborating closely, you know, with other people within the company, as well as key stakeholders, in order for us to select those correct, right automation and AI solutions that will benefit the company, but more importantly, would align to the overall objectives and goals of the business. So I feel like we should start first with identifying those pain points and areas, and then going from there to make sure that we are doing those tasks and finding out those uh, time-consuming activities that AI and automation can actually help us do better in. Wonderful. And we've already talked about the heart. So how do we keep that human touch in the midst of all this? You know, there's oh. a huge revolution around us. And how do we keep the human at the center of this? You know, maintaining a human touch to me is truly important because in the midst of all this wonderful technological revolution that we're taking, it is really crucial for us to foster those employee experiences 
engagement and well-being in order to boost productivity, correct? And so for me, what I do in my HR department of one is I have some certain strategies, bringing that heart into it, bringing that human side, right, into it. Um, emphasizing communication is one of those things that really helps. Um, encourage those open, transparent communication, especially between employees, leadership, employers, um, having those face-to-face -face interactions, even the video conferencing, having that, you know, one-on-one -on -one with them is also another way that we can keep the human touch. Um, encouraging collaboration, so super important, especially in this age where, like you noted, AI and automation and technology is just taking over in really rapid speed. So um, fostering that collaboration among, you know, teams and ensuring that they have those opportunities that are created for them um, to be able to work together on projects, to share ideas, to make sure that uh, they're using the tools and platforms that are available, you know, for them to be able to facilitate that, you know, collaboration. And another way too for me is to invest in employee development. Super important. You already know that burnout is real and job plateau as well. So um, being able to prioritize employee development and growth, offering those training programs that is going to help them not just focus on technical skills, but it's also going to help them foster those soft skills like emotional intelligence, communication, um, resilience, um, providing also opportunities for mentorship, coaching, and, you know, just providing that sense of community and camaraderie, you know, among the whole team, I think would help us keep that human touch, even while we're in the midst of all of these technological advances in the world of work. Wonderful. And, you know, you're not the first one who, is, who has talked about community on our show. It seems to be the common thread that seems, um, you know, to uh, keep us all united uh, yeah. in this uh, challenge of taking on <laughs> all this technology in our function. I always um, tell my team, I tell them, look, um, we're not a family, but we're community of professionals. We come aligned for one goal, the objective of the business, but of course, using our skills and talents to bring that to play. Great. Um, you know, a lot of folks, especially CEOs of giant companies, um, are predicting that AI will be smarter than humans by 2030. <laughs> Which, That's amazing. <laughs> right? So, I mean, um, they, and some of them are saying it could be as early as next year. You know, this this AGI that they keep talking about, uh, the general intelligence being, um, the wiki from the Terminator. <laughs> I think of it. Um, not as fearful of it, though, as I used to be when I watched the uh, Terminator when I was a kid. But, you know, um, there's a lot of good that can come out of AI as well. So sure. What do you foresee for HR in 2024 and beyond? And, you know, what are some of those big hairy goals uh, that we should be aiming for as HR teams in this year? First and foremost, what we've been talking about almost for the past, what, 10 minutes, AI and automation. That's what I foresee already from 24 and beyond increased adoption of those two platforms and technologies. Um, HR departments are going to have to learn to continue to leverage AI, you know, and automation in order to streamline processes, to enhance even employee engagement, for example, or enhance decision making, um, to improve the whole employee experience. So from recruiting all the way to onboarding, we're going to be seeing an increased adoption of AI and automation. Another thing that also that I am foreseeing is is a focus on employee well-being, right? We have always talked about it. I think COVID did bring that about where everybody just came to a point in the whole world and learned, first of all, how quickly things can turn around and change, not just in a place of work, but personally, right, in our own lives. And so companies, I'm foreseeing from 24 and beyond, will focus on employee well-being, making sure they're prioritizing, you know, those kinds of physical, mental, and, you know, emotional health so that we can drive engagement, so that we can drive productivity, so that we can also pro uh, re retaining our top talent and keeping them. And then data-driven decision-making. I mean, HR analytics, for sure, and um, just having those programs where we are going to really rely a lot on data in order to 
gain insights, right, to get those informed decision making, and also to just drive strategic workforce planning. So I see that coming with data. And then lastly, having those Agile HR practices, really important because then that means we're able to quickly respond, right, to any kind of change or business needs, any kind of market dynamics that are going to affect the company, both internally and outwardly. And then, of course, you know, to also engage with employee expectations. So having HR being agile enough to prioritize flexibility, um, being able to make sure they're adaptable and, you know, just collaborating across all spectrums of a company to business will allow, I think, from 2024 and beyond, allow us to really be the drivers of strategic um, in the business. Well, that's what we call being as agile as a gecko at HR Gecko. <laughs> I <home>. love that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, agility is so crucial today. So crucial. <laughs> so in the same token, uh, what are you most worried about for oh. this year for our HR function in general? And if you had a magic wand, um, what would be your ideal solution to uh, overcome that challenge? I think I speak for a variety and a majority of the HR, <laughs> you know, professionals. Recruitment and retention. The labor market is at a spinning level as we speak. It's unbelievable the amount of movement, both in and out, that's taking place. You know, and people are either being let go, laid off, um, employees are burnt out, and they're looking for a better place. Um, there are toxic environments that are not conducive anymore to professional growth and development. So the labor market is really in a tipsy turvy. <laughs> and so that keeps me up at night, especially retaining your talent. The ones you have currently and wanting to promote them, develop them, train them, and make them to be the best professionals for you. Mm -hmm. Truly, if I did have a magic wand, I would find a formula that was going to make sure that those two, you know, functions, recruitment and, you know, uh, retention were just um, set in place so that no matter what's going on as change within an organization or personally with our employees, we're able to have that right fix to it. Great. So along that, those lines, what's one piece of advice you have for our HR colleagues who are looking to adopt or learn new technology? Um, you know, what do you think they should be aware of in general and how should they be better prepared for all of this um, automation that's happening around us? 100% make sure that you are embracing a mindset of continuous learning, a mindset of continuous experimentation. Um, be flexible and adaptable towards that because HR really um, is really at a cross of being a strategic business partner to many organizations. And so if we see that technology is constantly evolving, we should also be in that same mindset of just learning what the latest trends are, ensuring that we have the tools, we have the best practices in place that's going to set us positively, you know, to have the best competitive advantage really in mm -hmm. any industry or company that we are in. Wonderful. So that brings us to the funner part of our conversation where our audience gets to connect with you, our question oh. connection section. Who do you think uh, is one person you've gained in your network in this past year in the HR technology, HR space that we should all be learning from and connecting with? Marlos, I to mispronounce his last name, but Carlos Laracilla, Lara um, he is the CEO and co-founder of Wow Ledge, and he has just this excellent platform where you're able to just make strategic HR um, practices that are accessible for you and your team. So if he's one to really look out for and be a part of. Um, your favorite HR podcast or HR book related to HR tech? Oh, that's, I have two podcasts. Can I share that one? Sure. Okay, great. So I love the art of having difficult conversations. And this is hosted by Chris Wong. 
excellent in that because in HR, you're going to have those performance reviews. You're going to have those, you know, conflict management situations where you really need to know how to, you know, speak, you know, confidently and of course, clearly and concisely. So that's one podcast I love. So it's the art and science of difficult conversations. I also love the modern people leader. You know, it's forward thinking HR. It's great podcast that um, really helps you just learn from industry individuals, you know, on what's really going on right now in, you know, in the industry. So if we, if we had an HR playlist for working from anywhere, what's one song you'd add to the playlist? Oh gosh. I thought about that one. <laughs> um, I would hope it's something to do with confidence and never giving up. Um, because it's really tough right now for most of my colleagues in HR and the professionals. So any kind of upbeat love song that's just going to keep our head down and just let us go and do the best that we can in the situation that we'll be brought in. You're not naming a song, though. <laughs> I know. I'm like, there's so many. And I'm just, I just feel like anything that's just going to build the confidence for sure would be great. All right. Um, would you recommend, um, you know, working from home? Uh, working remotely or a or working in a hybrid setting as something that suits your work life right now? Hybrid setting, just as great balance, right? From working at home, but then also still being in an office setting a couple of days a week allows you to just be the best productive professional that you can be. So hybrid for sure. Wonderful. And how do you enjoy giving back to the HR community? I know you do a lot of work in your community, but specifically for the HR community. So when I attend events and even um, there's some local you know, um, organizations that I'm a part of, I just enjoy going to um, volunteer. So we do have some activities that we do within a community that helps. And so with my po colleagues and professionals, we just, you know, band together and go help underprivileged kids or disadvantaged communities and just give the best that we can and go back to them. Well, our audience has definitely learned a lot from our conversation today. And if they'd like to connect with you, what would be the best way for them to reach you? So I'm on Instagram. It's my first name, Ifi, last name, Itwoku. I'm also on LinkedIn, where you can find me the same, Ifi Itwoku, as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you again so much for sharing your insights and learnings with our audience today, Ifi. I look forward to interacting with you on social and being in touch with all your latest uh, work in the HR space. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure, Jay. Thank you so much. Listen on your favorite podcast channels and watch us on YouTube. Follow us on social. We are on LinkedIn, X, Instagram, Facebook, and Threads. Join our budding community on LinkedIn and Facebook. Ask, answer, advice.